Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video, we'll be going back to the Expanse series. We will be covering Tiamat's Wrath, which is the eighth book in the series. It was published on March 26, 2019. For the other books that have come before, there will be a link to the playlist in the upper right corner. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. Drop us a comment and leave us a thumbs up and let's get into it. Prologue Holding Jim Holden is an honored prisoner on Laconia and he is at Avasarela's funeral. Christian Avasarela died on the moon four months ago. Duarte not only held her funeral on Laconia but built her mausoleum there and is planning a memorial to be built to her. High Council Duarte's plan to make Laconia the center of humanity was working. The most prestigious scientific research institute had all moved their headquarters to Laconia. Businesses, banks, celebrities, scholars all came rushing in. Everyone including Holden was at the reception. Carrie Fisk and Kamina Drummer were there. Holden stopped to talk with Drummer, not saying much because they both knew they were being listened to. Chapter 1 Elvi. Elvi Okoye has been made a major in the Laconian military. The Laconian Empire has given her a ship called the Falcon. While she is in charge of the science, the military is in charge of the mission. They are currently in a white dwarf system that has one planet in it, a Jupiter-sized diamond planet. The Falcon was designed at the request of High Council Duarte, especially for her, and it had one mission to visit the Gate Network's dead systems and see if they held any clues about the nameless enemy that had destroyed the Porto Molecules Builder's civilization. Admiral Mehmet Sagail was the military commander of the mission and his orders are to bring out the catalyst in every system they pass through and see if the system has any military value. The catalyst is a woman who was in the pen on Laconia and who was infected with the protomolecule. The Laconians had found out that the protomolecule communicated faster than the speed of light. So they are using the catalyst to see if they can get any reaction in any system that they pass through. And LV, every time before they use the catalyst, goes in and apologizes to the woman, although she knows that the woman most likely cannot understand her. She also promises the woman each time that she won't forget that they did this to her. Chapter 2. Naomi. Naomi and Alex had hid the Rosinante in a cavern on Freehold. Alex was now with Barbie. Amos had taken a high-risk mission into the Laconian system and hasn't been heard from since. And Jim was captured. And she just used the Verity Close and Ice Hauler to get smuggled into the Sol system to Deep Transfer Station 3, which is in orbit between Saturn and Uranus, locked into position with the Sol Gate where she meets up with Bobby and Alex. She and Bobby don't quite agree on how Sabe is handling things. She thinks they should try to get more leverage, while Bobby thinks they should go the military route. Bobby has smuggled the gathering storm into the Sol system on a top secret military mission. But Naomi doesn't want to lose any more of her family. Chapter 3 Alex After they had all hugged and Naomi had left, Alex and Bobby went off to make sure that the garden storm was transferred safely from one freighter to the other. Alex thought there was more to the garden storm than people knew, but when he brought it up, people looked at him straight, so he stopped. Bobby didn't know what their mission in Sol was, but she had trained a team using Laconian marine power armor and they had run three different operations with a 100% success rate, with no casualties. Bobby's second in command on her strike team was Julian Houston, the daughter of Freehold Governor Payne Houston. When they were alone, Alex asked Bobby what she and Naomi was arguing about, and Bobby said she still thinks we should negotiate our way out of this. We disagree on that point. Alex replied, She lost a lot. She's afraid of losing it all. And Bobby said, and that's the point I keep trying to make with her, my friend. In a fight like this, unless you're willing to lose everything to win, you lose it all by losing. Chapter 4. Theresa 
Her name is Theresa Angelica Maria Blanquita Lee Duarte and she is the High Council's 14-year-old daughter. She speaks with Colonel Ilch, who has been her teacher. She questioned him about the builders and who killed them. And in short, nobody knows. That's what they're trying to find out. And later, her father wants her to come to one of the meetings with him. When she questioned him as to why, he tells her he's preparing her to take over in case anything happens to him. Chapter 5, LV. They move the Falcon away from the planet, got into their crash couches, preparing for a high-speed burn away from the planet if anything blew up. Then they move the catalyst out on a gurney. Their study of what happened to the dead system was just as important as what happened to the catalyst when contact was made. It took 18 minutes before they noticed that something had happened. In one small section of the planet, it seemed to make a copy of the catalyst's brain and all over the planet they could see what looked like gate-like radiation popping up. They came up with a theory of what's happening. They believe that the planet when it comes in contact with a protomolecule infected mine it makes a copy of that mine. Then these gate signatures start showing up all over the object. So they believe that this planet could be a backup drive for the builder's entire civilization. She brought up that theory to Admiral Sagil, hoping that he would allow them to have more time to study it. But although he was intrigued, he refused. And they left and headed for the Tacoma system. As they lay in the crash couches, waiting to jump to the Tacoma system, she told Fayez that Admiral Sagil had some other agenda that he wasn't telling them. Chapter 6, Alex. The gathering storm was hidden inside the ice hauler pendulum. Alex co-pilot on the storm is Caspar Asso. The pendulum dropped them off and Bobby told them what the ops was. The target was a transport union freighter that was escorted by two Laconian frigates. They were going to launch their attack while Jupiter blacked the line of sight to the Laconian Magnetar class battleship that was parked in orbit around Earth. They were going to try to capture the freighter which was carrying supplies that the storm needed and best of all, possibly capture the political officer. Bobby and her team was going to try and board the transport ship. The storm took out the two frigates and took some damage, but not before the, one of the two frigates fired at the freighter in an attempt to take it out. And Alex didn't know if anyone was alive on the freighter. Chapter 7, Bobby. Bobby's team included Julian and five belters. They were all in Laconian marine power armor that was painted black. When they got in, they separated. Julian took her team down to engineering to take control of drive and life support systems while Bobby went to the apps deck and cut off communications with the outside. Bobby's team took out five of the seven people in apps. Within seconds they were in control of apps and Julian reported that they were in control of engineering. They had what they came for, the political officer and their inside contact. That's when everything went to hell. Some PDCs hit the freighter going through the ship. Anyone not in a suit was killed. Their primary mission failed, but the secondary mission was a win because they ended up with the cargo. Chapter 8, Naomi. Laconia controlled Medina Station and all of the repeaters on either side of the gates. Naomi was using Opiatrix to get information to and from Saba to members in the different systems. She had left the Mosley and was currently on a ship called the Baikashikama. She was currently studying the Baragaran system which is expected to eclipse the Sol system in about a hundred years. They had a plan to take control of the system from within by placing people in critical positions. So Naomi was going from system to system, analyzing reports as they came in, passing on orders and recommendations. Chapter 9, Theresa. She started on the meeting between her father and Carrie Fisk. She even asked a few questions. When Fisk left, her father questioned her on what she observed. In class, she found out that the boy she liked was kissing someone else. She tried to make sure that no one saw that it bothered her. Later, she went for a walk with Muskrat, her dog, and ran into James Holden. She didn't trust him or like him, but he was always polite when they talked. 
one of the things that Jim told her was that the ones you trust are always the most dangerous. More kings and princes got poisoned by their friends than eaten by bears. So when Colonel Ilch asked her later what was wrong, because he noticed her reactions in class, she remembered what Holden said, and she replied, everything's fine. Chapter 10, LV. LV had a reaction to the sedative mix, and by the time they brought her out of it, they were already in the Tacoma system. The Tacoma system was empty. Besides the neutron star, there was nothing. No planets, no planetoids, no asteroids, nothing. There wasn't even dust in the system. That means something in the system must be actively keeping it clean. And the other thing was the gate was further out from the star than any of the other gates. The neutron star itself was as massive as a star could get before it becomes a black hole. Once she was back on her feet, Sagale took her into his office and told her what their plan was now that they have found an empty system. They brought two freighters into the system. One is empty, the other contains 20 kilograms of antimatter. They're going to keep sending ships through the gates until the energy transfer load reaches the critical state. Once the critical level is reached, they're going to send the empty freighter from the system through the gate. Once the ship vanishes and the energy transfer load is still high enough to make transits impossible, they're going to trigger the antimatter containment field and transit the second ship. It should vanish, but it will detonate the load. She thinks that that is a very bad idea, but they think that this is a way to warn whoever it is that's making ships vanish. If they are intelligent, they will stop. If it is a natural occurrence, then it will continue. And this is their way of answering both of those questions at once. But she wasn't able to talk them out of it. Chapter 11, Alex. After the raid, Alex and the team was hiding out on Callisto, where he got a message that his son Kit had met a girl and was probably going to get married. He finds out that the Tempest is heading towards Jupiter, and then he and Bobby began talking, and he asked her if they aren't fighting an unwinnable fight. If when they and all the old guys are gone, will the young pick up the fight? Chapter 12, Bobby. After Alex left, Bobby thought about what he said, and although she disliked it, she was beginning to think he may be right. As Bobby was going through what they took after freighters, she found that they may have captured some antimatter containment vessels. They always wondered how the Magneta class battleships powered their beams, and now they may know, and Bobby may also have found a way to win their next fight. Chapter 13, Naomi. Naomi was on the Bikaji Kama and she got a message from Saba telling her about the raid and the results. She also received a message from Jim, a public message that informed her that he was doing well and being treated okay. And then she got a message from High Council Duarte offering that if she surrendered herself, she would be treated okay and she would be able to meet once again with Jim. Then she got word from her contact on the ship, Emma, that a Laconian destroyer was coming to do a full inspection of their ship, so they needed to get ready for it. Chapter 14, Theresa. Theresa found out how the security system on her window worked. It was magnetic. She found a way to fool it and snuck out. She found a drain tunnel that led under the garden out to behind the palace into the forest. In the forest there was a cave that was the entrance to a cavern. In that cavern there were repair drones that was built by the gate builders. Also in there was Timothy, her one true friend. Speaking with Timothy made her realize how alone she was. Later back in her room she went through the security logs to see what Holden was doing. She listened to Holden and Dr. Cortazar speak and she was doing this because Holden had told her that she should always be watching him. Chapter 15, Naomi. They got everything stored away for the inspection and disguised Naomi as best they could. The ship and Naomi managed to get you the Laconian inspection because the chief engineer covered for her. He knew who she was all the time. Chapter 16, Elvi. 
back in the Tacoma system, they got ready to detonate the bomb shit. LV was unpleased about it, but everyone else seems excited. They detonated the bomb ship, and for a few minutes, nothing happened. Then they realized that something was feeding energy into the neutron star, and that it would soon collapse into a black hole and they had to leave immediately. So they began a high-speed burn towards the gate, hoping to get out before the collapse happened and a gamma ray burst shot out. Chapter 17, Alex. Alex is planning a way for the storm to escape from Callisto without the Tempest seeing them. And Barbie tells him that she found the antimatter and she wants to use it to attack the Tempest. He thinks that's a bad idea and that they should get out of the soul system and let the big brains figure out with this new info what the right strategy is. And she said she'd think about it. Chapter 18, Naomi. Naomi is on the ship and the captain isn't pleased. She wanted to send a message but he refused her. Most people on the ship now know who she is. Then they received a shipwide alert saying, all union ships tap priority. All traffic through all gates are suspended by order of the Laconian military command. No ship permitted through any gate until further notice. All transits are on hold. All ships on approach are to evacuate to lane 0.8 AU immediately. Something big was happening but no one knew what. Chapter 19 LV They made it through the gate into the slow zone and were preparing to jump to Laconia when the gamma ray blast came through. The blast destroyed the Tacoma gate and the Tanjava gate, which was directly across from it. All the other gates reordered themselves, now that there were two less gates. Chapter 20, Theresa. Theresa was called to meet her father, who explained to her what happened in the Tacoma system and the destruction of the two gates. Then he asked her, what does she think they should do? Should they stop or should they continue? When she said stop, he was disappointed and he explained to her that they can't stop now or the enemy will think they were weak, so they have to continue. He also told her that he plans to have her begin taking treatments like him so she could become immortal. Chapter 21, LV. LV just found out from Admiral Sagale that they were going to send you another bomb ship into another system because it will be retaliation for one of their ships disappearing through the ring. Of course, LV disagrees with this, but there was nothing she can do. This time they were going to use the Typhoon's ultra high magnetic field projector to send energy through the gate to raise it to the critical point. That's when they were going to send a new bomb ship through. Since Thanjava's gate is gone, no one knows what happened in the system. That system is now totally isolated. There was one inhabitable planet with three cities on it with 80,000 people in the system. Since the system is eight and a half light years away from the Jidara system, they will know if their sun had exploded in eight and a half years. Another thing that they noticed that this little packet universe ended at the rings and nothing came true. It was like something beyond the event horizon. But since then, they've been seeing radiation coming in from between the rings. They've never seen that before. And just as Admiral Sagale was getting Medina Station to look at that new data, the universe exploded. Everything became like vapor. LV could see through everything. She had been in this situation twice before. Then something began moving through. They were like darkness that had never known light. When it was over, entire swaths of the bulkhead decks and equipment were gone. Sagale was still there, but his head and right shoulder were gone. Fayez was alive but missing a foot, and the Falcon was in the Laconian system. LV immediately called for help. Chapter 22, Theresa. Theresa was with Timothy when it happened. He immediately knew what it was and he urged her to go home because a lot of people would be hurt and they'd be looking for her since she was important. Once she got out of the forest, Colonel Ilch with a flyer was waiting for her. When she asked him how he knew where she was, he said that she had a locator implanted in her jawbone when she was born. There's never a moment when security doesn't know how to find you. When she got to see her father, he was in a catatonic state. He was sitting there, awake, but unresponsive. 
that the court is all speculated that since the high council was making himself more and more like the builders that it made him more vulnerable to the attack than the rest of the humans and until they can make the high council well his personal valet kelly Colonel Ilch and Theresa will be the ones running the empire. And no one was to find out what happened to the High Council. Chapter 23, Naomi. Naomi was in the Eberron system when the message came through that all transit through the gates would be stopped until further notice and that they had lost two gates. Naomi was an Eberron with Shava when it happened. Shava was her contact on Abara. They tried to get a message out to Saba who was on the Medina station but no response. Later they found out what happened. It seems that everything in the slow zone was gone. Medina station, the ships, the repeaters, everything. The only thing left in the slow zone was the alien station. All of human existence in the slow zone had been wiped out as if it was never there. Chapter 24, Bobby. Bobby was asleep when it happened. Bobby found out that the typhoon which was in the slow zone disappeared along with all human artifacts and that the admiral in charge of the soul system, Admiral Trejo, was headed back to Laconia leaving his second in command in charge. She saw this as their opportunity to hit the tempest and she spoke to Alex. Alex told her to talk to Naomi and if Naomi agreed then they would go and do it. Interlude, the dancing bear. Holden spent his time trying to make friends with everyone around him. He knew he was being watched all the time. He saw Theresa in the garden and he spoke to her for a little while and he saw that she was upset and he figured out that something must have happened to Duarte and he figured maybe it was time for him to speed up his plans. Chapter 25, Naomi. Naomi is an Aberon and she began making plans. Now that she knows for sure that Saba and Medina is gone, she is taking control and getting ready to begin running the underground. And she already has some plans that she's working on. Chapter 26, Elvi. Elvi was in Laconia in the hospital and she was one of the few to make it through the Falcon without getting hurt. Most of the other people were either killed or hurt in some way. Admiral Trejo informed her that he intended to carry on the fight against whoever this enemy was, that they think they hurt them and if they hurt them once they can hurt them again. He was going to ship as much ships into the slow zone to take control of the gates as soon as he could because there were systems that would die without trade. After speaking with the Admiral, she went out into the garden to meet with Fayez. She saw Holden with him, but by the time she got there, Holden had left. And that's when Fayez told her that Holden told him that Dr. Cortisa was plotting murder. Chapter 27, Theresa. Theresa snuck out to go and see the only friend she had, Timothy. That was a mistake. She was followed. And in the shootout that followed between Timothy and her guards, Timothy was killed. That's when Colonel Ilch told her that Timothy's real name was Amos Burton, that he was a terrorist, a murderer, and a mechanic on James Holden's ship, and that they wanted to know everything he ever told her. Chapter 28, Naomi. Naomi is in Aberon setting up communications with the underground when she got Bobby's message. And she agreed to Bobby's suggestion that they attack the Tempest. She didn't like it, but now that she was in charge, she had to make decisions that she didn't like. It was part of the game. Chapter 29, Elvi. Elvi was taken to the pen where Cortisor showed her two kids who died 20 years ago. And the repair drones had rebuilt them. And he thinks that's what those repair drones will do with Amos's body. When they went back to look for Amos's body, it was gone. She was there to be brought up to speed on Cortisor's research so she could begin to help. She began by asking the little girl if she was conscious, if she was sentient, if she was self-aware. A tear rolled down the little girl's eye and Elvi responded by saying, I'm sorry, I'm so, so sorry. Chapter 30, Bobby. Bobby received word from Naomi that the mission she wanted to do was a go. The plan was to attack the Tempest and use the anti-matter with a shuttle and blow up the Tempest while it's occupied with the storm. Alex wanted to be in the shuttle with her, but she told him to be on the storm so that he could be there to keep the Tempest occupied. Chapter 31, Theresa. 
to use Theresa to question Holden, but he gave the same answers he gave before. As she watched Admiral Trejo and Colonel Ilch, she could see that there was a rift developing between them. Also, when Dr. Cordeser came to get her, suddenly Elfie showed up and stopped him. Theresa was sure that something important had just happened, something dangerous, but she wasn't sure what it was. Chapter 32, Bobby. Bobby was on the shuttle, the White Crow, as she made her way towards the Tempest which was being kept busy by the storm. The white crew got shot up and the pilot got killed and Bobby had to do things on her own. Alex and the storm took out the Tempest's PDCs and Bobby began heading to the Tempest by herself. Chapter 33, Alex. Alex and the storm watched as a small human-sized figure went up towards the battleship. They thought it was Bobby. They watched as a PCD round went through the figure. But just when they thought they had lost, they got a spike of radiation on their sensors. And then, when the sensors cleared, the heart of the Tempest was gone. Bobby had died taking out the Tempest. As the storm headed towards the gate, no one stopped it. No one got in its way. Bobby's second in command, Julian, was now captain of the storm. She tried to make Alex her exo, but he said no, he has his own ship. Chapter 34, Elvi. Elvi went to see Trejo to warn him that she thinks Dr. Kodazar is going to try to kill Teresa. Trejo said he would try to protect Teresa, but there was nothing more important than bringing High Carlson Duarte back. And if that meant sacrificing Teresa, then he would let it happen because Kodazar is too important and she, Elvi, will have to work with Kodazar. Chapter 35, Naomi. Naomi left Oberon because they were sure retaliation was going to be coming and if the Laconians analyzed any of the traffic they would see that most of their messages for the underground was coming from Oberon. Naomi was at first headed for Baragaron but she changed her mind and headed for Freehold instead to meet up with Alex. Chapter 36, Theresa. Theresa is in class and she finds that she has to lie to the kids to help them keep calm by telling them that her father has everything under control. Then Elvie came to teach her class one day and warned her that Dr. Cortisol is going to try to kill her and that Trejo knows about it and that they're doing everything to protect her but she must know so that she could protect herself too. When Theresa asked her how, Elvie said she didn't know. She was in over her head and Theresa agreed that she was too. Chapter 37, Alex. Alex and the storm made it into the slow zone and over to Freehold without. When Alex left the ship on a shuttlecraft to go down, that's when he found out that they had renamed the storm Draper Station. When he finally got to the Rosinante, being on the ship for the first time in a long time, Naomi was waiting for him. Chapter 38, Naomi. Naomi and Alex spend time fixing up the Osinante, getting her into shape. Then Naomi spent some time sending messages to and from the underground. They had just taken the Osinante up into orbit when they lost time again. This time, almost 20 minutes. Chapter 39, Elvi. Elvi is making progress with the kids Kara and Zan. Since they were brought back to life by the repair drones, they don't age or seem to change in any way. And they seem to be connected to something they call the library, which is a knowledge base that seems to be held within the protomolecule that they can access, although they have no idea what it means. Elvi was next in a meeting with Trejo, Ilch, and Kuroza, where she gave a theory. She believes that since the builder's consciousness was different from humans, it was probably built on magnetism. So the enemy was able to kill them no matter what they did. But humans are different and recover quicker. So the last event was the enemy trying to figure out how to kill humans since it was different and lasted longer. When asked if they can get the High Council back to the way he was, they told him that they don't see any realistic path for him returning to his previous state. Chapter 40, Theresa. Theresa spent time with her father, who doesn't seem to be getting any better, although sometimes he seems to recognize her. Colonel Ilch came to see her and then showed her the notes that Amos was keeping. He was keeping track of holding his coming and going. After he left, she decided she couldn't stay here because it wasn't her home anymore. 
Chapter 41, Naomi. Naomi, Alex, and Lewis and Nante are sitting right inside the freehold gate. Naomi had managed to put together a fleet from 53 systems for 118 ships. One of those ships was the storm that came to transfer some crew to the Rosinante. Naomi then sent out her orders. Chapter 42, Alex. Alex on the Rosinante had recorded a message to send to his son, but he thought about it and then deleted it without sending. Then Naomi made her plans known to the entire fleet. They were going to go to the Laconia system to destroy its construction platforms, without which they won't be able to make battleships, destroyers, or antimatter. Then the ships jumped into the Laconian system. There was no one at the gate when they came through. But soon, two destroyers were headed their way while the Magneta battleship was in orbit around the planet. Naomi's plan was to draw the Laconian battleships out and then sprint around them to the construction platforms. This was the siege of Laconia. Elvi, chapter 43. Elvi and Kodosa was working with Kara and Zan when they were called by Trejo to meet him in his office. He told them about the invasion and that they needed to have Duarte make a statement to the people. Their plan was to scan him and then use recordings to fool the public. So they went in to meet with Duarte and then Duarte stood up, waved his hand at Cordesa and blew out Cordesa's chest and half his head. They all quickly left the room and Colonel Ilch said, that thing in there is not Duarte. We should put a bullet in his head. Trejo offered him the pistol and said, if you think that will work, go ahead. And Ilch, Ilch backed down. Trejo gave her full access to everything Dr. Codiza had. She was now in control of the pen. Chapter 44, Naomi. The first ship to die was the Mamatus. It came back into Laconia to resupply when it was attacked right outside the gate. They next attacked the transfer station, but it was able to shoot down all 300 of the missiles coming in at it. Then they began to barrage Laconia itself, not just with missiles, but rocks, titanium rods, and gravel. Nothing was aimed at the capital, but the Laconians didn't know that, so to be safe, they had to stop everything from hitting. They got close enough to the construction platforms to fire missiles at them. That's when they received a message. It was an evac request from Amos. Chapter 45, Theresa. Theresa put her plan to escape into action. First, she got to LV and asked if the Falcon could fly. When she was told no, she went to option number two. She got holding out of jail, then pocketed Amos's pocket nook, and then she used his evacuation protocol to call for an evacuation. Chapter 46, Elvi. Elvi went through Cordoso's notes and realized that he's been lying to Duarte all the time. She also found out that Holin was the one that put the idea of killing Theresa in Cordoso's mind. She was asleep when Ilch called her crying that Holin had escaped and he came looking to her to tell him what to do. After she did and he left, that's when Fayez told her Holin and Teresa. She then went to Teresa's room, released the dog, and followed the dog to Teresa and Holden. That's where Holden told her all this was for her to get her in position and cut us out of it because he wanted someone sane. She then let him and Teresa go. Naomi, chapter 47. Although she got the evacuation signal from Amos, she went ahead and attacked the construction platform first managing to get close enough to destroy it. They took out the orbital weapons platforms and then headed down into the planet for a pickup. Theresa, chapter 48. Theresa and Holden got to the pickup point and that's when Colonel Ilch caught up with them. He was about to shoot Muskrat to force Theresa to come back with him when Amos came through, killing the two soldiers and Ilch. That's when the Rosinante landed and picked them up. So the four of them were back together again. Amos, Alex, Holden, and Naomi. As it came up into orbit, the whirlwind had them on target lock. Chapter 49, Naomi. The last Magneta battleship, Whirlwind, was targeting them. When they were ordered to surrender or be fired upon, Theresa stepped in and saved them. Shooting down Duarte's daughter would be a fatal mistake. 
stopped for anyone. Then the four of them held a little ceremony for Bobby. They headed back out of the Laconia system. They had lost 32 ships and just about 200 lives. They had destroyed the alien construction platform that Laconia used to build its fleet. Laconia had one Magneto battleship left, the Whirlwind, and it was only one ship. And if it left the system, it would leave Laconia undefended. So it was stuck there. Once in the slow zone, the fleet scattered to different systems. They would have to find another way to control traffic through the gates because nothing human built could stay in the slow zone anymore without disappearing. Chapter 50, Elvi. Elvi went to see Admiral Trejo and basically told him that he should make peace with the rebels that they had bigger problems and that she wanted to get the Falcon fixed so that she could go back and study the diamond planet which she thinks is the Rosetta Stone that could help them out of the problem they're facing. Then went back to the lab and shut down the pen. Trejo sent her an update on the status of the Falcon. She then sent for Kara and Zan and took them out of their cages, setting them free and saying she hoped if they were willing they would help her by working with her. Epilogue Holden. Holden is relaxing under Rosinante. He's not talking to anyone about his time as a prisoner. He met with Amos and asked him if he was still Amos. And Amos said, yes, he's still him. He knows certain things, but he is still him. Amos was rebuilt by the repair drones after he was killed. And he told Holden that one of the things he knows now is that the things that Duarte pissed off, the ones that ate Medina, is planning to kill everybody. And Holden replies, yes, he knows that. And that is how the book ends. I want to thank you for watching and listening. I hope that you will consider subscribing. Give us a thumbs up, drop us a comment, and I will see you in the next video.